Hello everybody, and a very warm welcome to LMT YouTube channel. Prince Harry speaks of veteran pride as he calls for volunteers to support frontline services during COVID-19. The Duke of Sussex told the Declassified podcast, I think in today's culture, we need more role models that are willing to put others ahead of themselves after catastrophic earthquakes devastated areas of Nepal in 2015, it was the Teen Rubicon UK charity that Prince Harry joined to help rebuild one of the communities struck the hardest. And now, as the world continues the fight against coronavirus, the Duke of Sussex is encouraging more people to support the charity's latest efforts to help frontline workers and vulnerable people. During a chat with Military Podcast Declassified, Harry praised Team Rubicon UK's OP, REACT initiative, which has deployed nearly 200 veterans across Britain to supply food and personal protective gear, such as eye protection and medical masks, to those in need. Harry said, I'm honored to be a veteran, and honored to be part of this community. I'm just so incredibly proud to see what these individuals up and down the country and across the world are doing on a day, two day basis. What has happened, especially in the UK, shows the very best of human spirit. He added, it's also proving that I think things are better than we're led to believe through certain corners of the media. It can be very worrying when you're sitting there and the only information you are getting is from certain news channels. But then if you are on the right platforms, you can really sense this human spirit coming to the forefront. Team Rubicon UK, which helps retrain veterans to for life, saving humanitarian work, has already supplied nearly 35,000 meals to hospitals, food banks, and vulnerable communities in Britain. It has also distributed close to 1 million personal protective equipment items to frontline medical staff. Their network of 14-inch live tasks is also helping provide vital support to nationwide hospital mortuaries as they deal with the high number of COVID-19 related deaths. Harry added, I want to say a huge thank you, as we all do, to the NHS workers and everybody that's volunteering, because up and down the UK, there are literally hundreds of thousands of people volunteering. It's such a wonderfully British thing that we all come to help when we need it. He also took the opportunity during the April 16th podcast taping to congratulate Captain Tom Moore, the 99-year-old British war veteran who raised about $29 million for official National Health Service charities. He smiled. I think what he's done is utterly amazing, but it's not just what he's done. It's the reaction that people have had as well. I think it's just wonderfully British. It just makes me incredibly proud to see the Brits stepping up like this. But I really, really hope that this keeps going after coronavirus and after this whole pandemic has come to a close. Supporting the military community is an area of activism that Harry will continue to prioritize in his new working chapter. After serving in the armed forces for 10 years and undertaking two tours of duty in Afghanistan, he has remained committed to championing veterans and helping provide opportunities for wounded, injured, and sick WIS. Service members through landmark initiatives he has founded, such as the Endeavor Fund and Invictus Games. In his episode of the Declassified podcast, which is available starting April 19th. Harry said, I've said in the past, before I became a parent myself, but for those mums and dads out there who sometimes struggle to see who the appropriate role models are for their kids, I always say that the military community, especially the WIS community, are to me some of the best role models out there. He added to host Michael Coates, it's about selflessness rather than selfishness, and I think in today's culture, in today's world, we need more role models that are willing to put others ahead of themselves. I think that being part of a unit, being part of a team, and for me, 
wearing a uniform that was the same as everybody else's. It kind of makes you feel totally equal, but at the same time makes you want to do everything you can for the person on your left and your right. The Duke later added, the life experiences that you get in such a short space of time not only grow you up, but they make and turn you into what I think is an exceptional human being. You represent something, you represent a community, you represent a certain set of values, and I believe that those values will be with you for the rest of your life, and you want to do everything you can to give back. Former firefighter and soldier Coates, who co-created the network to promote and develop positive mental fitness, has shifted the focus of the podcast to support society in lockdown. He said, Hosting this episode with two fellow veterans was an absolute privilege. I have huge amounts of respect for what both have done and what they are doing right now to support our communities. To see the growth and development expressed by not only the military community, but seeing how society is working together towards a common goal is humbling. Another analysis. Is Prince Harry going to get a culture shock in the U.S.? Prince Harry and Meghan, Duchess of Sussex, have officially left the royal family and are beginning their new life in a somewhat surprising place. The couple, who share son Archie Harrison, have chosen their new home base in Meghan's home state of California. While very few details are known about their new home, including what their house looks like and what neighborhood they are based in, speculation has been running rampant. It's clear that the choice of Los Angeles was at least partially inspired by the fact that it is where Meghan's mother lives. But some fans have been wondering if Prince Harry could end up struggling with culture shock. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle lived in Canada for a while. After their announcement in January that they intended to step back as senior royals, Meghan and Prince Harry wasted no time getting their new lives underway. They promptly set up a temporary home base in Canada, where they had spent their winter vacation and reportedly enjoyed rest and relaxation while out of the public eye. Many fans believed that they would end up living in Canada on a more permanent basis, especially since Meghan had spent so much time in the country when filming her television series Suits. Although rumors flew, the couple refused to directly confirm their plans remarking in their statement only that they planned to divide their time between the United States and the United Kingdom. However, based on their recent actions, the state of California had been their endgame all along. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle recently moved to Los Angeles. In January, it was confirmed by several sources close to the couple that they would be locking down property in Los Angeles, California close to where Meghan's mother, Doria Ragland, lives. Prince Harry and Meghan again acted quickly, moving to Los Angeles just prior to the United States lockdown due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The couple has been in isolation since their move, and reports of their movements in California have been sparse. Still, there have been some early hints that perhaps Prince Harry is beginning to regret choosing to live so far away from his family in the United Kingdom. According to some sources, Prince Harry has not applied for dual citizenship, which could mean that he is not planning on living in the United States on a permanent basis. The same report reveals that Prince Harry misses his family dearly, especially his father, who was recently diagnosed with the novel coronavirus, although he has since recovered. Could Prince Harry experience culture shock in Los Angeles? Prince Harry was born and raised in England, and it is where he retains strong family connections. As a recent interview with Lady Julie Montague, an American who married into the British aristocracy reveals, this could mean trouble if he and Meghan plan on living in America for an indefinite period of time. There are very basic differences between life in the United States as compared to life in England, Montague points out. For one thing, Americans tend to be a great deal more open with their feelings and to live more informally. 
Prince Harry will undoubtedly struggle a little bit as he adjusts to a different way of life, as well as a completely different environment. As the story source states, this could mean that he suffers a bit of culture shock within the next few months. Still, this change could end up being a good thing for Prince Harry overall. Montague said, We are very emotionally open, which I think for Harry is actually a really good thing. He'll be able to talk about his feelings, probably more than he was able to talk about over here. So there you have it, that's all the news on Meghan and Prince Harry situation today. As always, thanks for listening. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and press that notification bell if you want to be notified of future videos. Thank you. Don't stop.